Welcome, everyone. Good morning, and thanks for joining us in introduction to Cisco IoT tools. So just a quick show of hands. How many of you are working on some IoT-related project right now in your organization? Not one? Kid? Few of you. Um, is it the rest of you are just trying to understand if IoT is the right thing for your business and an area you would like to look at? That seems like most of you are here for. And that's what our introductory session is all about. Um, Myself, I'm Shubha Gobal. I'm Director of Product Management for DevNet. Um, and welcome to our DevNet zone today, uh, bright and early. This is great to see you all here. What I'm going to do in this session is talk a little bit about industry very quickly, um, then jump into some of the tools that we offer within Cisco technologies and then in DevNet, uh, which is our developer environment, so developer.cisco.com. And I will go through some of these tools and pick out a few nuggets that might be interesting for you to look at. Um, just getting started from that technology itself. So how many of you have seen this picture? Pretty much, right? Yeah, and some of you were there in the session yesterday, so welcome back. Um, Cisco predicted this few years back, right? The amount of connected devices that are getting on the network, uh, by 2020, 50 billion, that's a big number, right? That's no easy task there for the people as in the keynote, so Ruba was just talking about the security aspect, thinking about like all the things that you need to have in mind when you're talking about that many connected devices in your environment. How you manage, how you get outcomes out of those, the right actions, the data you are extracting, a lot of that will, as we go through this presentation, we'll talk about. Just keep some of this visual in mind. Second piece, very quickly, um, how many of you have heard of Industry 4.0 or come from the manufacturing environment, right? Um, that's a big shift from where we were in terms of the tooling itself. The industry is changing so fast and what it takes to have your machinery be ready for this change is also something to keep in mind because every day you are seeing your environment changing with the, the trends. So a few just very quick nuggets here. Let's look in the IT era, right? This is the evolution as we are talking since last few years. Right now we are really talking about this deep analytics automation. All of these trends are driven by the IoT, the amount of connected devices that are getting on internet, right? There's another big thing that's happening with this, right? It's not just making sure you are getting the results out of, you're getting the right data set out of your connected devices, you're making sure how the, the predictable your environments you are making, but it also goes down to the type of innovations, the type of use cases you are building on top of it. And that becomes the real thing in terms of digitization, in terms of IoT. So as we talk through, keep in mind the use cases, and I will talk a little bit more about the use cases as well. So now, now let's look at briefly some of the IoT system that Cisco brings in, and we'll go into the details of the, uh, the tools there. But really, when it comes to the Cisco IoT portfolio, there are technologies in these six big areas that you will find. And I will tell you more about these resources as we go through and focus on a few. Of course, network is the big part. But more important, that network layer coming down to fog computing layer. And we'll talk about the fog computing a little long lot today. Partly, this is the layer where not just your compute, your storage, your networking, all of it coming together to make those real-time decisions. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Security, I can't say that enough, right? That word security itself has to be a main part of equation. When we talk about connected devices, especially in the enterprise environment, 
there could not be a discussion without security in it. Data and analytics, right? That's what makes it real for you to make those decisions. We'll talk a little bit about the data and analytics. And of course, from the operational aspect and from deployment and uh, aspect of your applications, you have to think about how those devices are managed, what are the tools that you are using to automate your environment, and also talking about the platforms that can enable that application flow you are trying to build. Right, so those are some of the key areas that we'll talk about as we go through this presentation. This is an eye chart. I don't want you to remember all these details. The point that I want to get across in this chart is for you to think about for all these industries that we are talking about where the IoT is becoming real now, right? IoT is really important in some of the industries like manufacturing. Think about the oil and gas, and we'll talk about some of these use cases. The connected city environment, the transportation environment. There are different layer of devices and this very market architecture device uh, diagram that you are seeing here from the, the compute layer perspective, from the equipment and devices perspective, there's a whole lot of infrastructure pieces here as well. And those, as you see some of the products that Cisco provides, along with this IoT security layer, the management, and this fog piece, the IOX piece, which we'll talk a little bit more about. So just a quick visual view into it. But once you start looking at the use cases, where the most of the work needs to go in, people already have these devices, the, the manufacturing devices, or in oil and gas industry, the rigs, they are already there, the physical infrastructure is there. That is just getting enabled by sensors, the pieces of data collection where the device itself can become the source of data. And then the big part of the work happens at the fog layer, where, and we'll talk about why fog becomes so important, but some of these industries which are taking very good use case in the fog compute space come into the smart transportation. That's one of the area pretty huge right now. Whether it's you are talking about the, the, the vehicle itself or you are talking about the smart in infrastructure. Um, oil and gas. This is one of the toughest industry to work in, partly because of the environment you are, the physical environment where you are. And in order for you to be able to connect the data or bring in that information from these different resource places, like so you are talking about a remote rig where the oil extraction is happening. Uh, there's data which shows daily, they have half a billion terabytes of data coming out of that oil rig, some of the largest oil rigs. That's huge amount of data. How do you think they will transport all that data into some cloud or have big infrastructure to store that data and then making that decision making on that data. It's all very difficult to do without the fog computing. And then some of the preventive maintenance, this is another big use case we are seeing a lot more people doing right now for industrial environments where the sensors, the data collected from the sensors is enabling that smart decision making where they are replacing the parts very quickly, the preventing the full maintenance and full replacement of equipment, which can cost in millions of dollars, right? So those are some of the use cases where we are seeing a lot more um, fog compute and the IoT becoming real, real scenarios coming in right now. So let's talk about it a little bit more. Um, why, why it matters so much, why we are spending a lot more time thinking about this fog computing layer. Part of it is if you think about at the endpoint itself, right, at the device itself, you probably don't have enough uh, ways to the space capacity, you don't have enough ways to process that data and make those decisions. When you try to put that data in the cloud, again, there's a lot of latency getting that data transferred all the way to cloud, 
coming back, the results being analyzed, coming back to your application, all of that takes time. And that's very valuable when you talk about the real scenarios when you are on an oil rig, you need to make a decision right now. And your data based on latency takes a whole day to bring back the answers you are looking for, not an option anymore. Right, so if you are in that industry, if you are in transportation industry, you are trying to make a change, you are trying to differentiate your company from your competition, some of these options don't, are not there anymore. So as Ruba was talking about earlier also, like digitization is real now, right? A few years back, everyone was saying like, yeah, it's the new trend. It's no longer that new trend. And, and that's where the fog layer comes in. So now we'll quickly jump into our, some of the tools and technologies that are available. Just a few notes. This is uh, developer.cisco.com slash IoT. This is our IoT developer center. So you can find all the IoT tools in this area. Um, as you go there, we talked about those six pillars for Cisco and where all these technologies area that we are focusing on. We have, for today's presentation, this lot of stuff there. I want to focus on two pieces, two key pieces, two tools. One is at the fog layer, other is at the application layer for operational management, prototyping of your, your applications to bring together. So those are the two tools we'll talk a little bit more about. Some more links for you, you can find, other than just the tools, they are sandboxes, our IOX sandboxes that are available there. For you to just go through your first lab, play with some of the data there, some of the information which is already there. Of course, a lot of learning uh, content available there. So let's look into IOX. So this is the platform. How many of you have heard about Cisco IOX? Any? Some of you, have you played uh, on the DevNet Learning Sandbox? No, okay. We, we, that will be an interesting area for you to go look at. Really what it comes down to for IOX is, this is the complete, your compute, storage, networking, all of it coming together in your fog layer, right? So this is a platform that enables you to host applications and services just in your fog layer. And I will talk a little bit more about what it means, the type of applications that you might want to look at in your fog layer. But really, it comes down to IOX. So from Cisco hardware side, we have two models, 809 and 829 IOX models. So this is the fog hardware um, that comes with complete set of compute for your application management, and I will go a little bit more into details of that, what it means. Um, as well as connection with, so all our networking equipment, which is connected there, and for application hosting and deployment environment. So its environment is pre-built for you, so you can start creating your applications or services that you are looking to build. Uh, so let's jump into the architecture a little bit here for IOX. So within the IOX, there are two set of components. One set that lives on the fog layer itself, and other set could be in the network, other places, right? For example, if you go from top down, your portal, fog portal, your director, could be in the cloud or on your premise, where in your data center. But this middle layer right here, this is what's sitting on the fog, it's on that device 809 or 829 device itself, what it gives you, it connects to the whole fog nodes environment. This is our networking routers and switches environments that's connected to the, the switch, the 809 or 829. Comes with a host OS on top of which you have a whole CA CAF, which is a application hosting uh, framework, and that has APIs for you to further enable the use case that you are looking to enable. 
it comes built in with some of the, for your ease of building app, whether you are a Java developer or Python, it enables an existing VM environment. Um, so it already comes with the tools for you to be able to build the application on top of it, as well as complete set of network management, device management type of services that you need to. So this is, think about this is your um, FOG application lifecycle management complete built into that switch so that you can take it, put it in the environment, start building the type of applications that you need for your use case. The top layer, uh, again, that really helps you now if you are looking at a full uh, FOG node environment, how you orchestrate that, how you manage that, and that's what the FOG director brings in. On top of that, there's a client. This is the CLI tool you can use to call into the FOG director or to make your use case more visible, or you can use the SDK direct APIs to call into that as well. So those are the tools available for you, and then Portal makes it very easy for you to access the, all that together. So this is a complete set of application hosting environment that's and right now available for FOG environment, so complete set of compute storage networking created for you. So if you are thinking about a application or even to try our basic, there are a lot of learning labs we have. So if you go to developer.cisco.com, you will see some of the learning labs that are already created on this. Also, I have Jock Reed back of the room right there. He's our IoT dev evangelist. And he's hosting some of the learning classes on the uh, IOX tomorrow and th today and th tomorrow. So two days, there will be a lot more detailed learning classes on that. Just a little quick look for those of you who you have used IOX before. It's one of the most interesting thing that came out with 1.2 version right now is our Docker tooling support, right? So if you are working in the Docker container environment and that's how you're building your apps, the IOX environment now supports that. So that's one tool. Let me take a pause and ask a quick question. So any of you thinking about uh, the building of apps in the fog at this point or anywhere close to that? Quick show of hands. You guys are looking into some of that. Yes, this is a great tool. And definitely try, while you're here, make sure to meet some of the experts in the DevNet zone and learn more about this tool. So the next tool that I'm going to talk about, now once you are in the, um, you have your fog environment set up, your devices are set up with the sensors, the right amount of data you need to collect. The very first thing that you, a lot of the time people struggle is, what's, how do I prototype my base IoT use case? The operational aspect of it. And we have a very simple prototyping tool, which is drag and drop that you can use to start seeing what type of sensors you want to bring in, what type of data, what type of uh, rules you want to set for those sensors to take a specific action. So, Let's look at Dev IoT. That tool is available. It's a prototype tool available for free right now on developer.cisco.com again. And um, what it does for you is, and actually I will go into the real tool itself in a minute for you to show some very quick uh, scenarios here. But it gives you a very quick drag and drop interface to start prototyping your IoT apps. So let's, before I go into the actual Dev IoT itself, let me show you um, quickly the, the type of components we are talking about here. And, um, and Dev IoT actually will let you visualize all the things, whether it's the fog, the device itself, or the end application layer. And that's an important one to um, keep in mind. So as we talk about the, the things layer, right? This is the layer where the sensors really live. This is where your devices, if you are in connected transport, 
smart transportation environment or smart city environment. The type of devices, the type of sensors are very different than you are talking about a um, oil and gas environment or you're talking about a manufacturing environment, very different type of tools. Um, as you look into the IoT infrastructure, and we talked a little bit about that, there's beyond the fog layer, there are tons of networking infrastructure. There's all the other service and management tools, as well as some of the tools that we just looked at from the IOX side of the thing, right? There's the orchestration layer. So these are the different pieces that you need to think as you are building your IoT environment or thinking about your use cases. These are the type of questions you need to look at. What are my sensors? What's the infrastructure I'm talking about and thinking in my environment? How do I enable this environment for right orchestration, right management layer? And of course, the, the thing comes down to you are trying to achieve an outcome for your business. You're not working on an IoT app just for fun. And that too, that also you can do, right, for your home automation or for your DIY kits, right? But for your business, when you're thinking about it, think about what problem you are trying to solve, what need you are trying to solve. So from that, let's, um, and I think we talked about these a little bit already, but let me jump into the Dev IoT tool itself. And I'm going to actually build this. This is the architecture of how the tool is. But while after this, I'm actually going to go to the tool right now. So just give me, bear with me here. So for the Dev IoT tool, the simple way to do that looks like the presentation is not picking up the browser here. So on your laptops, if you have your laptops open, So it's not sharing. You just want this? Yeah. There? Yeah. I think it's just because it's a second screen. OK. OK. Thank you. So this is a tool that's available on developer.cisco.com under the DevNet creations area. You can go into the demo. It looks like connectivity is still a little slow. Looks like we are having some issues with this connection. So let me actually uh, do this. I will go back to my presentation and talk about it a little bit more. So what Dev IoT tool, the way it's built right now is it uses IOX that we talked about earlier. It also uses another platform from connected from the platform from Cisco. But main function that is doing is a MQTT broker function, right? And in that, what it does, it, it can connect the data and it creates a visual uh, layout for you for various things that can talk to data in motion as well as where you set up your rules. So that's where you can set up your rules. And then it talks to any of the actions, like, I don't know, any of you did Spark or Tropo session earlier? So those are tools for messaging. So Spark is for chat, 
end messaging as well as Tropo uh, through audio and IVR messaging uh, tool. You can create actions and say, if my device sends me certain amount of data, or if this rule is true, send me a message. So those are the type of actions you can enable with the Dev IoT tool and visually just see it happening. It enables you to use the virtual tools, virtual sensors that are built in, as well as you can connect using real sensors. So if you are playing with some real sensors or even prototyping with things like Raspberry Pi or Arduino, you can connect them to Dev IoT and have that real data take some action, send a Spark message or send a Tropo note, or for some of the simple examples, if you uh, walked up for the, the learning train, that train that you have seen on the DevNet zone, that's turning on a real signal for that toy train. So those are the type of actions this tool can help you visualize with both uh, virtual data as well as real data. So that's really where it comes to for you to be able to play with the environment that you are trying to build before you even go and start building your real use cases. So as we talk about uh, the tooling within the DevNet environment, so these tools are all available under the IoT section, and if you are logged into your computer, you can see those. I think there are a few more things that I would like to call out. One is our connected city environment. So we did not talk about that today, but smart cities require a lot more, not only the connectivity wise, all the sensors and data and where it goes, but from platform layer perspective, how you process that data and how you are writing the right rules to drive those outcomes. And there are some smart connected city tools on, again, developer.cisco.com under IoT section that we are not talking about today, but just wanted to give you a flavor that those exist if that's the use case scenario that you are thinking about. So as we go into the next section, as a developer, as a person who's trying to think about these things and say, what's the next for me in my IoT journey? Either you are starting to just learn about what it means for your business, or you are thinking about doing certain uh, scenarios for your business. There are a few things I would like to call out in the last section. Just talking about some of the important questions, how you approach IoT, right? We talked about there are tools from Cisco and outside all over the place. But thinking about these key questions when what my infrastructure looks like, right? So this is where it comes down to when I'm talking about infrastructure, both physical and networking infrastructure, right? And thinking about it, will it be sufficient to give me the right amount of data that I'm looking for? the right amount of uh, the connectivity that I'm looking for my devices. Um, think about what do you want to connect? It's not just things. It could be people, too. It could be to drive your operational decision making. What are the type of things you want to connect? Thinking about the information. Thank you. Thinking about the information you need. So there's tons of information as we were talking about like per day, almost a billion terabyte of data coming out of some of the largest rigs. In that, not every single point of data is something that you need to know about or need to use. But being able to think about what's that right set of information, right filter. So these are the things keep in mind, think about ahead of time. Being able to think about what's your What's your monitoring strategy looks like for this data? That's a key question to ask. That's a key question to think about and work on ahead of time. And how you use this data. So you might find the right set of data. You have right environment to pull that data out for you. But what it's addressing for your use case, 
Is it to create your key performance indexes that your business needs to notice? Or is it to actually take an action? Is that action needs to be in real time or not real time? Because all of those things will drive the decisions you will take for the right product and the tool that you use. So before you look into your tools, these are the type of things to think about. Security, absolutely. There's no, no way we cannot, today we cannot think about an IoT environment without thinking about security. I can't emphasize that piece enough. Because once your data is connected through these devices, there's always a possibility, and that's where just the enterprise level application like we are talking about IOX comes into play. And then most important, like what you are building, who you are building it for, who are your users. Your, your user set can be very different too. From operational perspective, what functionality you need versus for the end user who might not be the operational person for your environment. So those are the critical questions always keep in mind as you are working through your first IoT application. Also, beyond the, the IoT specific tooling, I do want to call out that it's just a piece of this big puzzle we are trying to put together, right? You have your devices, your network, your sensor infrastructure with Cisco is not providing the sensor infrastructure. But there are other tools the, that come into play. And whether it's your compute environment, whether it's your collaboration environment, this is where how you notify people once you have found the right source of data that you need to take an action. Thinking about security, the analytics, what are the data? So the big area we did not cover today was the data analytics. And that in itself is a big, huge area when it comes to IoT, being able to drive that analytics that you want to capture. Um, from the next, once you have decided all these technologies, integration, integration, integration. Because these tools, still the way industry is today for IoT, these tools are very different and in order to make them work together, there's a lot of integration work that needs to go in. Whether it's using third-party tools or Cisco tools, always keep in mind what are the type of tools which are relevant for your environment. And there are some of the tools called out. Like even Twitter is a great integration tool for sending messages, depending on your use case. Um, some of the tools like uh, for Freeboarder.io is one. There's Build.io, another partner of Cisco, which is in the DevNet zone right now. But from analytics perspective, IBM Watson, right? So these are the type of tools that a lot of the IoT developers are right now playing with. So if you are thinking about it, these will be the great tools for you to start looking at. Of course, APIs, we are all, DevNet is all about APIs. So don't forget to think about how, what are the rest APIs that you can explore and use in your um, creation. And then infrastructure layer, right? This is where a lot of the six Cisco equipment, and I'm assuming most of you are already familiar with those equipment from whether it's an Epic EM or from the open source, like the open daylight environment. So that's from the networking layer, the SDN layer perspective. From the containerization and virtualization, this is where for your application building, thinking about the, the Docker environment or VMware, depending on where you are. And that's where IOX tool is the switch is already built with those environments. And then continuous integration. So. DevOps, how many of you are using DevOps in your environment right now? Quick show of hand, few of you. So IoT is no different than any other development environment. And DevOps tools are as real in IoT as in another software development environment. So thinking about how your integration tool chain looks like from the application layer, the application integrations perspective. 
So these are some of the thoughts to keep in mind as you work on your application. The last area that I'm going to call out is, other than the Cisco tools that we talked about, some of the broader tools in the puzzle of IoT, skill set. That's also a very important piece, and I know a lot of you are here to build that skill set or start thinking about your IoT. Some of the skill set, the new skill set that are becoming more real with IoT are, of course, the, the data science is a big area, which is analytics and data science is one of the area not only driving for IoT, but automation, cloud, everything is bringing that skill set. Thinking about the programmable network and automation, because with the amount of devices and the, amount, the type of network you are talking about, you do need that programmable network and automation skill set. Um, we talked about the analytics aspect, but also the visualization aspect of uh, data, right? Whether it's the uh, network visualization function or also for your data visualization, right? The type of tools you are thinking about as well as the skill set. And then building on the policy-based network management as, well, um, as we talk about the network as the platform for the analytics, because network itself has so much data. So these are some of the skill set that you guys are already you have from the network side and how you can leverage those to build your IoT skill set is a key area I just want to call out from the skill set perspective. So as we wrap up, the IoT tooling is not just about there, you can find tons of tools for your network layer, for your fog layer, for your device layer, all the way on top for application layer. It's also about looking at the processes, looking at the infrastructure, looking at the skill set, and bringing that together. That wraps up the, the big puzzle that IoT is, because right now that word itself means so many different things to people. And I just want to leave you with that thought. As you start building your IoT use case, think about all of these areas and how you add that in your tool chest, whether it's a skill set, whether it's a tool that you learn, or the new technologies that are coming to enable your IoT environments. So thank you so much for joining us in this session today. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask at this point. Thank you.